There's a scene in the book and Netflix series The Three Body Problem where a planet that orbits three stars happens to align with all three, forming a syzygy. This is when three or more celestial bodies are configured in a straight line. In this scene, the collective gravitational pull of the three stars causes enough of a tidal force that the people and the atmosphere are pulled away from the planet. I was curious, what would need to occur for this to actually happen? There are two things we need to consider when this happens. Is the planet too close to the nearest star? And would these tidal forces rip the planet apart? For the first question, the answer is yes. I haven't done the work yet, and I'm sorry to spoil the surprise, but stars are just absolutely bonkers in scale, and tidal forces only occur at cosmically minute distances. So no, this wouldn't happen with real stars. But let's do the work to see how impossible it would be. Let's assume the planet is Earth. That means anything on the surface experiences an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared towards the planet. Let's start by creating a tidal force that counteracts this force. The tidal force is the difference in gravity felt between two gravitationally bound points. Because gravity gets weaker the further away from its source, the point closer to that source will feel a slightly stronger attraction than the point that's further away. However, because gravitational strength decays so rapidly, when you are far away, this difference in strength is pretty weak. Although we feel a stronger pull of gravity from the sun compared to the moon, because the moon is so much closer, it produces a stronger tidal force. Now, let's see how much mass we will need to create such a tidal force. At one Earth's radius away, we would need one in a third Earth masses to pull us away from the surface, which may sound unintuitive. However, you must remember that in these impossible scenarios, the Earth would also be accelerating towards the gravitational point source. So just because we put more mass here, doesn't mean we would float away towards it. If we were to somehow hold both of these objects in place so that the Earth doesn't move as well, then of course you would be pulled up and away towards the more massive object. At the distance of the Moon, we would need the mass of 354 Jupiters to create the desired tidal force, which is about one-third the mass of the Sun. And at the distance of the Sun, we would need the mass of 19.5 million suns, which is roughly five times more mass than the black hole at the center of the galaxy. Yikes. So yeah, doesn't look good. But let's just see, let's just see. I'm gonna start with an idealized scenario of three neutron stars. That way we don't have to worry about being inside a star. A heavy neutron star is 2.1 solar masses. So we just have to see how far away 6.3 solar masses needs to be to create the desired tidal force. This distance would be 2.66 times the distance of the moon to Earth. This means the center of mass of our three neutron stars needs to be here. For simplicity's sake, I will just place the middle star here, and then the other two half the distance from the middle star to Earth in both directions. This places the closest neutron star half a million kilometers away. If this was the Sun, which of course it's not, it has twice the mass of the Sun, but if it was, the Earth would be inside it. Oops. Alright, alright, but we don't need the Sun. What about something smaller? White dwarfs are what's left over after stars around the size of our Sun reach the end of their lives. They have an upper mass of about 1.4 solar masses and a radius half a percent that of the sun. If we replace the neutron stars from before with white dwarfs, well, the distance doesn't shrink too much, actually. The closest white dwarf would only be 65,000 kilometers closer. There we go, safely outside of a star. Maybe in this exact configuration, this event could happen, except, Stars that form white dwarfs of this mass will always go through a red giant phase. And that red giant is indeed giant. The other two stars would be inside of it and consume its gas. If one of these stars was a white dwarf during another's red giant phase, this accumulation would trigger a supernova, 
And at these distances, that supernova would probably destroy the red giant. Type 1 supernovae typically occur here, not here. So there's no physically conceivable way three white dwarfs would find themselves locked in such a tight orbit. But let's pretend they were. Would the nearest white dwarf cook us? The average white dwarf temperature is around 20,000 Kelvin, which um, is like four times hotter than the sun. At that temperature, our nearest white dwarf would cast 137 kilowatts per square meter of radiation to the surface, which is about 100 times what we receive from the sun. Oh, we're cooked. Okay, but ignoring that, would there be enough tidal forces to rip the Earth apart? A celestial body is torn apart by tidal forces at what is called the Roche limit. This is roughly the distance where the tidal force is equivalent to gravitational force, with some caveats. For the Earth and the Sun, that limit is a little over 500,000 kilometers, which means the Earth would also be inside the Sun before this happened. The Roche limit also just applies to celestial bodies that are only held together by gravity. Earth is not held together just by gravity. The majority of the Earth is held in place by chemical and physical forces. Therefore, the Roche limit for Earth is a bit closer than this distance. If the Earth were to be plopped into this theoretical scenario, it's likely it would hold its own as the atmosphere, oceans, and authentic Italian pizzerias were ripped away from it. However, the immense expansion and compression of the Earth would cause absolutely devastating earthquakes and volcanic activity that would likely destroy almost anything left on the surface. But the Earth itself would likely survive this endeavor. Therefore, this syzygy, as depicted, would be cosmically impossible to occur. But that doesn't change the fact that it is pretty dope. <laughs>